$7 trillion. This is the average daily turnover in the Forex market, known as the biggest market in the world. Any person on the planet has made a deal on the currency exchange market. People that fly to other countries and travel, importers and exporters, online shoppers, companies, and more. The exchange market is active 24 hours a day, 5 days a week, from Eastern on Sunday 5 p.m. until 4 p.m. Friday. So, what exactly is the Forex market? How does it work? How can you trade on it and understand this amazing market? We will cover this subject with a complete guide of all you need to know. So sit tight and let's start. Forex, known for foreign exchange, can be called also FX market. It's a place where banks, individuals, companies, and investors are exchanging currency for another currency, making trading speculations, hedging their activities, or investing in other currencies. There are 180 currencies in the world and most of them can be changed into all the other currencies in the world directly, which means potentially 132,000 Forex trading combinations. Any currency is traded or exchanged for other currency. Let's have a look at how normal exchange works. The United States dollar symbol in the Forex market is USD. The European euro currency symbol is EUR. Currencies are always traded in pairs, so the URE versus the dollar will look like this, URE slash USD. By the way, this pair is the most active traded pair in the market. The base currency appears first, and the quote or variable currency appears last. The current exchange between them is 1.03, which means that one EUR is worth 1.03 USD. It can also appear as an inverse pair and symbol as USD slash EUR. And if divided 1 by 1.03, I will get a quote of 0.97, which is the inverse quote of it. If you take 1,000 EUR and exchange them for US dollars, you will get 1,030 USD. If the EUR and USD is now 0.90, then 1,000 EUR is worth 900 USD, meaning the dollar got stronger. Every pair of currencies is determined by supply and demand, and we have dozens of reasons that affect the power balance. Let's count them according to the most influential reasons. Political situation. When the war in Ukraine began, the US dollar traded against the Russian ruble, which symbol is RUB, at 77 ruble per one US dollar. Then Russia starts to take hits from the sanctions. As a result, the ruble devalue against other major currencies and traded versus the US dollar at 130 rubles per dollar, meaning the ruble got weakened by 68%. Exporting and importing in the country significantly affect the local currency. Back to our last example, because of the war, the prices of gas and oil climbed dramatically and Russia got the advantage of it since they are big exporters of those energy materials. They enjoyed the high prices. Because when other countries are importing from Russia oil and gas, they need to pay the exporters in their local currency, which in this case is the ruble. As a result, the demand for the ruble climbed and now traded at 57 ruble for one US dollar, meaning the RUB got strength by 128%. Of course, when there is high demand for the local currency, it's getting strengthened against other currencies too, unless there's more demand for the other currency, who's the currency traded against? Interest rates and inflation effects have high effect too. Theoretically, when interest rates go up, it should strengthen the currency because more investors will buy the currency to receive a good interest rate. But sometimes hiking an interest rate is a result of high inflation in the currency country. For example, in Mexico, the interest rate stands on 7%, but this is because they need to tackle inflation which stands on 7.65%, and although it's a nice yield, it's not getting strengthened against the USD which has 2% interest, because high inflation is weakening the currency, so it's cancel all the interest that you get. You can watch our video below about how inflation affects the currency in the description below. Other major factors affect currencies, and there is not enough time in this video to talk about them, such as printing money, public debt, GDP data, unemployment data, and more. Trading and hedging Companies with international business relationship use the currency market to hedge their profits and expenses via currency contract for months or years ahead. For example, Tesla manufacture most of their vehicles in China, 
So the cost there will be in Chinese yuan since they need to pay for the workers, local parts, expenses, etc. And their cars are sold mainly in Europe or United States. They need to maintain the profitable ratio of the sale price cost and limit the exchange rate exposure by buying contracts of Chinese yuan versus EUR and USD. So if the yuan will get weaker, they will lose on the contract but will profit from decreasing costs since they need to convert revenue to the local currency. And if the yuan will go up, they will earn it in the contract but the costs will go higher. That's how they're not exposing themselves to fluctuations in the exchange market. Forex trading is very attractive to traders because it's involving high leverage which contributes to fast profits. As a result, it creates much more excitement than stocks and other traditional markets, but it's also a double-edged sword that can cause high losses. In fact, 95% of Forex traders lose their money in the first 6 months. This is mostly because of the fact that they don't know how to manage their risks. Let me explain. The Forex market is less volatile than stock. The movements in the Forex market are around 8% a year in major currencies. The S&P 500 standard deviation is around 15%, and NASDAQ movements are around 21%. So the changes that happen in the Forex market are slow, but brokers can give you a leverage of up to 200 times above your money. So imagine you getting buying power up to 50 times more than your account funds. This can give you a lot of yield potential. Let's say I have an account of $2,500 in a margin Forex account. Theoretically, I can open positions up to value of $125,000 assuming I have multiplied by 50 leverage in my account. So let's say I decided to take a leverage position of GPP, Great Britain Pound, traded versus the EUR. Their pair will look like this, EUR backslash GPP. Assuming I think the EUR will get stronger more than the pound, I need to buy the base currency in the pair, which is the EUR, and to sell pound. The variable currency in this case, any leverage position involved buying one currency and selling the other one is traded against. If I was thinking that the GBP will get stronger against the EUR, then I had to buy the variable currency and sell the base currency. Pair current price is 0.8544. The two digits after the dots are known by everybody as cents, and the fourth digit after the dot is called pips. Some currencies have five digits and some four but only the fourth count pips, which will help us calculate profits. In some currencies, you will see two digits after the dot like the Japanese yen pairs, so the last consider pips. Anyway, for the sake of the example, I decided to buy 100,000 EUR and sell the equivalent GPP amount, which is 85,440 pound. As I said, I have only $2,500, but I can get up to 50 times my money. So I can enter a 100,000 euro deal, which by the way, is called lot. Lot is the size of 100,000 units from the base currency. Mini lots are 10,000 units and a micro lot is 1,000 units. Assuming the EUR went up as I predicted and is now traded at 0.8600, which means it's up by 56 pips, I just made 560 Great Britain pound. If every EUR is worth 0.8600, Pound multiplied by 100,000 EUR is 86,000 pounds. So the difference between buying and selling is 560 pound. I just did 26% profit in one single trade. Hallelujah. The pip value is calculated according to the pair rate. So for this example, it's 10 pound for one lot. Don't worry, you don't need to calculate it. I will attach the linked calculator in the description below. Wait. But what if the pound got stronger and the new exchange rate is 0.8444? Oh boy, I just lost 100 pips, which are 1,000 pound. I just lost almost 50% of my count in one trade. Always calculate your potential loss before entering any leveraged trading. So this illusion of having so much money in our hands causes people to trade without proper risk management since they are drifting with thoughts of high potential returns. Besides trading in margins and speculation, there is also another trading method called carry trading. This trading strategy is based on interest rates difference. You're buying the currency that has a high interest rate and selling the currency with a lower interest rate, and you keep the trade overnight and get its rollover fees for the long run. Let's take the South African Rand symbol ZAR traded versus the EUR. EUR slash ZAR price is 17.21 meaning for each EUR you want to sell, you get 1721 African Rand, or the opposite, 
The interest rate of the South African Rand stands on 5.5% and the Euro interest rate stands on 0.5%. So if I want to enjoy the high interest of the Rand, I need to buy Rand and sell the EUR. So selling one lot, which in this case is 100,000 EUR and received for it 1,721,000 Rand will give my net interest rate of 5.5% minus 0.5% equal 5% yearly. This will give me 86,050 African Rand which is 5,000 EUR assuming no change in the exchange rate between the pairs. So if I had an account of 10,000 EUR and I use it as collateral margin to maintain this position, it means that I made 50% a year on my account. But there is a risk involved, of course. Assuming the RAND is crashing by more than 10%, then you are out of the trade and your accounts is now empty. Carry trade is more suitable for fewer volatile pairs and for advanced traders. If I was buying a EUR and shorting the ZAR, then I was debited by the rollover fee every end of the day. The rollover fee is based on the current interest rates of both currencies plus markup from the broker, so most likely you will not get the 5% net difference between the pairs and you will be debited by more than 5% if you will buy the EUR versus the RAND. If carry trading is your method, then compare rollover fees between Forex brokers. If you prefer the trading leverage method for short periods, then you need to pay attention to the spreads between the ask and the bid of the major currencies you plan to trade on. As in leverage positions, the fees can get to $20 to $30 commission round per lot. Take the EUR USD sample. There are 1.5 pips spread between the ask and the bid price, meaning that for every one single lot, you will start with a negative $15 loss for the spread difference in the opening and another $15 loss when you close the deal so it's around $30 for a round. Now imagine you traded in 100 lots per year in trading volume, which is not a lot as you think. You spent $3,000 in commission in a single year. It can eat a lot of good yield from your portfolio, and don't forget the potential compounding yield that you can make with this lost fee. That is why it's almost the most important thing for you as a trader to check. The most important thing for you to check is the broker you're going to work with. If it is regulated by financial authority, how big is it? Read reviews about it. Regulation protects you in case you have a dispute with the broker. You can complain there, and they will check the matter for you. Regulated brokers will play fair with you since they don't want to lose their license. I personally trade in IC Markets, which is the biggest regulated Forex broker in the world and has a monthly volume of $1 trillion a month. They are very trustable. Their spreads are very competitive. The EUR slash USD has only 0.1 pip spread. They have the MT4 and 5, which is well-known platform. And basically, you can trade there in any financial product besides Forex, such as futures, stocks, crypto, and etc. I will attach a link to their website in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions about the video, just write them below. Thank you for watching.